In this video, I'm going to share with you guys all my experience of moving from Jamaica to Canada and the culture shocks that I've experienced. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to share with you guys my journey and my story of moving from Jamaica and how I became a Canadian citizen and what's my experience been like. It's been a whirlwind. It's been a blast. There's a lot of pros and so many cons. So I'm going to explain to you guys how I moved here. I met my husband when I was 18 in Jamaica. We lived in Jamaica for four years and then he moved back to Canada because we decided that Canada was the best choice for our children at the, at the time. We only had a son. So we figured that being in Canada was the best choice in terms of education. So that was the plan. So that's how we decided to move to Canada. So he was here in Canada working, putting the money together and um, filing for us. When we finally moved, to Canada, um, I have a six-year-old and a two-year-old, and I was 25 years old. And I work in Jamaica as a waitress, which is a lot of work, but it's my favorite job. I absolutely loved it. I work in Jamaica also as a housekeeper for many years, and I was working for a doctor. I work for a college professor, and I also work for another business guy. So I was working each day for three, three people. Every day I go to work. Um, I would work for one person then go work for the next so my days were absolutely crazy and I just seems like I could not get a break I couldn't get ahead it was hard to afford food and roof over our head at the basic that's how Jamaican lifestyle is you're working so hard but you seem to can't get ahead unless you have a really great education or a good start or I don't know something big that happens to push you ahead but it almost seems like you just couldn't get ahead. You were always happy because you didn't owe a lot. You didn't have a lot of loan or anything like that. So it's a different between Canada and Jamaica. You have less in Jamaica, but you don't have a big loan to stress you out. So you're you're more relaxed. So that's the difference. But I want, always wanted to get ahead. I always want to feel like I can provide for my kids and I always want to provide for the future. So it wasn't just about today. I always trying to grind for years to come for my kids. And um, the reason why I always have that in the back of my head, when my mom passed, I was 14 years old and she did not leave us with the next meal for the next day. And I never wanted to do that for, to my children. I always want to say if something should happen, God forbid, that there is something for my children, that I work hard enough that they could at least get themselves to a point where they could afford to be on their own. So that was my goal. I always have the drive to work and ensure myself, take care of myself, to live as long as possible, but life is life, so you never know. But I always wanna make sure that if something, God forbid something should happen, there is money in the bank, or there's roof of their head, or food, and food to put on the table. So that was always my goal, so that makes me work like a beast. Like I always just wanna work, 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 to make sure there was food for my kids, or something for the future. So my goal is always to have generational wealth. So um, when I moved to Canada, um, my husband was here and he was saving all his money to um, afford the paperwork and all of that. And plus we just got married in Jamaica. So it was a lot of money up front to come up with. So he was here working away, saving all the money so he could pay for our paperwork and filing and all the, um, you know, all the medical part that goes in it, all the, they do all they run everything because Canada is not taking you if you have any diseases any sickness or anything they are making sure you are healthy so you have a lot of procedures to make sure you take care of and those are expensive um, tests to be done I remember taking my kids and doing all those stuff to make sure you were clean and healthy so once the paperwork was um, once our clean bill of health was in but it was time for him to do his work over here so I had to keep um, taking care of the kids in Jamaica and shoulder so I was working even more overtime to make sure I could take care of everything while he was here working overtime so that was the goal so once the paperwork come through and it was time to move to Canada we decided okay we'll move for Christmas and it was a big rush again to save another bunch of money for three plane ticket to come so it was so exciting but it was so stressful so because the paperwork was approved a lot faster than we think it was going to be so once the paperwork was done, the ticket was bought, it was time to move to Canada. So we were here um, October 28th and it was just a joyous time. 
um, even though it was a culture shock with the weather and all of that but we we're just so excited to all be together and no more long distance relationship and all of that but um as i said it was a culture shock for me i didn't realize this that the culture was so far um different in terms of friendliness you know everyone that lives next door um i was so surprised that your neighbor door could be this close to yours and they would not even say good morning so that was heartbreaking and the next thing that i hated was just missing my families oh my god guys i used to spend so much money so this is a part of canada that completely different in jamaica um, my kids never go to daycare because there's always a sibling or aunt or cousin or somebody to watch your kids and you'd you'd trade time like i would give my sister my kids and she would have all the kids and then on my day off i would have all the kids and that's how we did it so we never pay um for child care and just the next thing i never know how to do here my my younger sister did all over here she was the one that um was the ear person she did my kids my daughter here at the time so i didn't have no no urge to do here and then guys trust me there was no youtube at the time there was no facebook to learn anything there was no facebook to to google what canadian weather was like or i just was not it was just a culture shock i just didn't have the um the knowledge but no guys there's if you plan to move to canada you can jump on youtube and there's just so much there there's so many different people taking you on vlogs and tours and stuff like that which i wish in my days that was there so when i moved to canada two months after i moved i was just so broken i said to my husband it's time to find a job and he was saying no no man enjoy being off for a little bit and i'm like god no i was just so broke that i just wanted to get out there so he helped me to apply to um a hotel which was the delta hotel at the time and i got the first application i put in was the delta and i got it and i start working and i tell you guys i was just so happy and so thankful to have some money in my pocket it was a lot to learn the bus route and everything but man i was just so grateful to have a job so once i did that i worked for three and a half years and then i have a friend that keeps saying girl you'll be so good at nursing and i said i would love to do that i used to pass this nursing home and said oh my god i would love to work in that building one day and for years i would walk by this going to my housekeeping job and then one day she said i can get you in and she opened me up and get me into this school because she was already in school she was a filipino friend of mine and um she, it was a filipino owned company and they decided that they would pay for my education that was 12,000 Canadian, so I did not have to pay for this education for one year. I was going to go and I was going to um, become a CCA. And guys, at the time I have three children, so and my youngest one was eight months. So it was like, OMG, with no family beside my husband, how am I going to do this? So I had to put my daughter in daycare. The others were in school and it was so hard. It was so incredibly difficult. But... Um, I was just so determined because I wanted a better life because at this point I worked three years into the Delta and I tried applying for a car I, I was denied I wanted a home for my kids and I just I tried that and I was denied the first try so I'm like God I, everybody always said you need to work more and you need to build your credit so it's I had no credit so I didn't have bad credit but having no credit was like having bad credit and I figure oh my gosh I need to build that up so once I started school, it was like, okay, this, this is going to pay me almost double what I was making. I was making 11 something an hour, $11.12 or something like that. But working in the nursing home would provide me, um, I think it was 18 something starting. I can't remember, but either way it was like $18. So it was a big bump in pay for me. Plus, um, I wouldn't have to do the, the cleaning job anymore. And it's what it's a dream that I had because I took care of my, my mom for three years when she had cancer. So um, it was just something that I feel like, oh, my God, it was just so cool to be there. And I wanted to do it for somebody else. So it was always in the back of my head to um, become a nurse's aide or something, but just didn't know how to do it. So when I finally started doing it, I was working five days a week for a full year and then um, going to school for two days monday to friday 
um, and then I work I go to school Tuesday and Thursdays and then work all the other days and I tell you I was so exhausted so drained but in the back of my head it was like a smile on my face every day I wake up just to say God it's one step closer and it's just the joy of knowing that when I was done I wouldn't have a student loan and I was gonna have an education because I just came straight out of high school and I worked during high school. It was just so stressful caring for two sisters during high school as well with an older sister. So it was a lot jump pack. So um, it was a lot. So I didn't really have a good high school experience in terms of working, going to school, working, going to school. And I had the responsibility to care for two younger sisters because my mom had passed and my older sister was caring for me and then i take my two younger sister in so it was a lot of work and she always reminded me girl you got to put a lot of time in because she wanted my younger sisters to stay with their dad but i didn't like the way they were living so i decided to take them to montego bay and it was on my responsibility to make sure that they had a place so i start working a full-time job while going to school in jamaica i know my story may be all over the place but if you don't understand anything ask and i will gladly tell you um but as i said it was an experience it was a, i've been working like a horse since i don't know how long and i just want to keep working because i can see the goal that i have just to know that one day my kids will be able to inherit something and it's going to be a peace of mind to know that i did something that no one else did for me so um once i was going to to work um, once I was done a few module in the book, did a, um, a few clinical in the nursing home, then I could start working. So that was like a dream come true. So I started school in September here in Canada, and then by December I got a job in the nursing home. Oh, hallelujah. Then once I start doing that, my boss said to me, um, if you're available, we have another nursing home if you want more hours. And guys, I was working. Don't ask me what hours I was working. Some of the hours was even illegal. I even got in trouble for overworking. But anyway, the dream was to get my kids into a home and that was the goal. Um, in Canada, sometimes you have to work three times as hard as a regular person or a regular Canadian just to prove that you're here to work and you're showing up every single day. I always feel like I have to work twice as hard just to be, especially in a nursing home, it's like you have to prove yourself. So, um... In Canada you work a lot harder but you can actually see what you're doing and see where you get into versus in Jamaica you're working hard but I feel like I'm still stuck in the same situation while my kids are going to good school here right and um, so that was just um, very filling and also knowing that I was going to school and getting an education it was like a dream come true so it was very hard in one hand but a double whammy in the other that something good was happening so once I graduated school, my whole goal was to get a vehicle. So um, by then I was working at a nursing home, I would say probably around six months, and I applied for a car and they didn't call me back and I was devastated. So then I applied for an, a car the next day again, another, another place. And then I was on my, work, my way to work and they called me, I was at the bus stop. It was the best feeling in the entire world to get a call that I was approved for my vehicle. So just imagine I was taking the bus every day, cold, warm, whatever weather, because here in Canada, guys, I'm telling you, it gets cold. So when I get the call to be able to just jump in my vehicle and get to work, it was like a dream come true. So I, our commute is now like a 10 minute commute to work. So it was like a step up. And then the next goal was to get that home for my children. Because at the time I have four kids in a room I have a stepson my son and my two daughters and I wanted that gone I wanted but I did not want to rent a more expensive place so um the goal was just to buy a house so on my first try I got denied but then I asked what did I need to do and I met this broker that told me step by step um, I probably put his name in my video somewhere because he was absolutely amazing. That's a matter of fact, I'll just link um, the video that I did on how to buy a house step by step. He was the one who told me step by step how to build my credit. My God, he was a godsend. He told me step by step what to do 
and how to get to that goal and how much to pay on this card or what card that I need to take out and how to pay my bills to get to that home. And I tell you guys, I work three jobs, work like a beast, but I'm telling you what the proud moment when I got that key to be able to furnish my house and move my kids in brand new. It was absolutely amazing. So that was one of the best feelings in the world moving here in Canada that I was able to afford a comfortable home for my kids because the work was harder, but there's opportunity to work. It's not like in Jamaica where you're stuck and can't find a job. There's not enough job or you need all these subjects. In Canada, as long as you're willing to work, there is jobs for you to work, right? And another thing, in Canada, it's not like Jamaica, if you know somebody in the company, you can get a job. It's not like that. Here, it's all about papers. So we don't, you go back to school and be educated, you can get that job that you need unless you're going to get a housekeeping job or something like that that don't require any paperwork. So guys, it's been a joy, but at the same time, I miss my family. I miss my family, but the only regret I have is that I did not apply for my sibling from Jamaica before I bought a house because I've applied many a times and each time I apply I didn't have enough money in the bank so 10,000 Canadian is not enough 15,000 Canadian is not enough you need a lot of money I've gotten approval from Canada before and then Jamaica denied my sister to come here um, because um, she didn't have the babysitting course because I applied to her to come up as a babysitter so that's my only regret because I said I was going to give you guys all my pros and cons and that was one of the saddest things that I couldn't apply for my sister. Um, for Canada approve her but in Jamaica they deny her saying that she needed to go back to school and unfortunately they don't give you the they don't keep that paperwork on file until you get that paper for um, the babysitting course that you need. They just you'd have to start all over again so all that thousand dollars that you pay for the labor job market opinion that's gone. So it was a, a lot of money spending and not being able to get a family member here. I've tried so many times. So that's the hardest part about being in Canada is that you don't have your family around. So you pay out of pocket for everything. So you don't have Nadine next door to pick up the kids after school. So you're going to pay $10 per child. That's what I used to pay. I don't know what it is now. Um, so I used to pay $10 for my older boy and $10 for the other girl after school every day. So that's $20. And to go to daycare, way back then, it was seven thirty three per month for each child. So I pay out of pocket like crazy. Where if you're in Jamaica, you'd have family help you out. So that's the difference. But at the same time, guys, it is the land of opportunity in terms of working hard and just being able to provide for your family. That's the best part about it. It's not like you want to work but don't have the opportunity to work. How humble you have to be and how willing you have to be to submerge yourself into the culture. You have to be able to come here and just put your mind and heart and soul into it. That's the only way you're going to be able to enjoy your time here is by just be everything you can and just submerge yourself into the culture. And then, as I said, I've been in Nova Scotia. I've never lived anywhere else. I've visited Toronto, Montreal and stuff like that, but I've been in Nova Scotia and I wouldn't change it. It's just been amazing. But I want to break it down all together what my journey was like coming here in terms of uh, paperwork from the per paperwork point of view I will break that down for you guys but guys it's been a journey it's been a lot of ups and downs but it's so worth it um, I miss my family that I miss the food I miss my culture back home I miss all of that but the biggest thing I just miss my family to pieces and then the hardest part was being here and lose a sister I lost a sister that was home she was only 29 years old that passed away while having her baby so that was the hardest thing i get to go home i went home with my husband for the funeral but that was it i just get home for a few days and i had to be back to work so i'm grateful that i was able to go home but it's still heartbreaking to not be able to be home and be with my family through that like be there even when she was sick in the hospital that was a that was just the toughest time being in canada it's just being away from your family when something big like that happened but guys um, if you get the opportunity to come here, don't deny it, don't reject it, come over, see for yourself. And the next thing I got to say, guys, when you are in Jamaica and somebody sent you something, be incredible, appreciative, be grateful because I'm telling you that cold weather to go out there and work and half the time you do not have the money for your own family and you send it back 
when I said your family, your immediate family, and you're sending back to extended. Um, even though when you move from Jamaica, you still feel like your own, your whole family back there, everything. But once you get here, it is so hard to um to send your money back because you got your mortgage, you got your car payment, you got your your insurance, your life insurance, your cell phone. It's just so much bills. So that's the difference between being here and being in Jamaica. In Jamaica, if your mom had a home, that's home and you can get some water at the top, put on the street or something like that. So if you're not working, there's not such a crunch. So that's a big difference there too. I'll give you a, a difference there. In Jamaica, if you're not working for six months, you can live and just have a little less or whatever. But in Canada, guys, when you're not working, every bill still comes in the mail. All of those checks keep going out. So if the money is not in the bank, them checks are bounced. So now you got a late fee on top of late fee on top of late fee. And plus your credit is going down the toilet. So I'm telling you guys, it's not easy over here. So when somebody give you $50, you better just appreciate it. Because the hours that they had to put in for that $50, you have no idea. It's a hard grind here. But guys, I don't want to bore you guys with all the bad stuff. I'm just going to tell you guys it's been a wonderful experience in terms of raising my kids here. I have one son that's in university now and I have a daughter that's going to graduate um, high school next year. So I have 21, 17, 13, 4 and a 1 year old. So guys, they're widely spread. But I wouldn't trade it for the world. Um... So as I said, education is key here and it's really good. Like my 17 year old, she's um, going to school for French and she's doing just exceptional. So as I said, the opportunity is endless if you're willing to put the work in. So you might have to work three times as hard or twice as hard, but at the same time, you can get to that goal that you want to get at. COVID had set me back a bit, but man, I'm alive. I'm grateful, I'm healthy. And I have my YouTube channel. I have my YouTube family. Man, guys, I appreciate you so much for supporting me. Um, I just, I just, I'm just so thankful. Um, I think COVID did a lot to just make me appreciate everything in a new light. Um, because you've seen how delicate life is. Not just COVID. I lost my first husband to a heart attack at 46. So, um. I was only 33 at the time, so um, it makes me appreciate life. So when I tell you guys I appreciate every moment, you better believe me because I know you don't get to live twice. You just have one life, so just appreciate your life. Be grateful. Start thank be thankful for the small stuff. You want more. Don't complain that you don't have the big house until you start appreciating the small house. So just go appreciate. Love you. Love your family. Love what you got. Be grateful. Be thankful. Be humble. Especially when you're in a foreign country, guys, you got to be so humble. So, so humble. So, guys, I love you guys. I appreciate you. And thank you so much for watching. And I will see you guys in my next video.